Your kite lifetime depends a lot on how you're treating it when you're not flying it. My name is Petar Pavlovich, I love sharing my kite surf experience with you and in this episode we will see how to take a good care of your kite. The way of pumping your kite, what about keeping your kite in beach position, how to clean your kite and some extra tips. I see many kiters who love pumping the kite with a compressor, but trust me, it is not the best for your kite as I experienced the explosion of my kite. It happens because most of the compressors are blowing out a super cold air. In warm weather conditions, the air in the bladder expands and can cause the bladder to explode. Also, many compressors have a super strong blow for the kite to inflate faster, but this can easily damage the functionality of the valve and even damage the inside bladder. As well, you have to know that some compressor can blow out some water or even oil, which definitely it's not supposed to be in your bladder. So I personally prefer to pump my kite with a simple kite pump, as it is as well a warm-up before my session. Before connecting the pipe on the kite, make sure to blow 2-3 times on the side to make sure you don't blow sand or anything else in your bladder. Most of the time I'm pumping my kite super hard, as in most cases it's flying better. I never experienced my kite bladder exploding while pumping with a normal kite pump. But you have to know that it can open some sewings. And if you don't fix them in time, it may cause a bigger damage. Some kites are showing the recommended PSI. Anyway, I prefer to decide myself when the kite is inflated enough by simply pressing with my hand the front tube next to the inflate valve. It is always important to secure your kite while it is in beach position. On a sandy spot, of course, you can use some sand to secure your kite which unfortunately is not the best for your canopy. On some kite spots there is no sand, so the solution would be to use your board with the fins facing up. But I do not recommend to use your board if there is strong wind, because there is a chance for your board to flip over and damage your kite. The best solution would be to have some bags or bottles that you can fill up with sand or small stones. It's important to avoid having your kite in beach position for a long time, Especially on strong wind, the canopy and the trailing edge flapping aggressively on the ground is definitely damaging the kite. And of course, the sun as always is not good for your equipment. I see many kiters leaving their kites on the beach while going for a drink or even to have a lunch break. In just a few minutes the wind can increase or even change direction and blow your kite away. Also it could get accidentally damaged by other kiters on the beach. The kite might suddenly start losing air, maybe because of small holes in the bladder or in older generation of kites because of unglued valves, which often happens in warm conditions. When you're setting up your kite for the first time after a while of not using it, or if it is a rental equipment, I always recommend to first pump your kite before setting up your lines. So you will have 5-10 to 10 minutes before launching your kite. As we said before, it is not the best for the canopy, but at least you will realize in time if your kite is losing air. But if you're already pretty sure that everything is good with your kite and there is not too many people on the beach who could mess up your lines, I recommend to first set up your lines so the kite is staying as less as possible in beach position. And of course, when you finished your session, make sure to pack your kite as soon as possible. In my next episode I will show you different ways of packing your kite in different conditions. And let's see now how often you should clean your kite. I would not say that it is mandatory to wash the kite with sweet water. I'm doing it just if I know that I will not use the kites for more than 2-3 months or if I'm ready to sell them. But definitely I want to make sure that I have nice weather and enough time to dry them properly. In general, it's never good to pack a kite when it's wet. But I would say it is way worse if the kite is wet with sweet water as the mold could kick in. If you pack your kite wet with salty water, you don't have to be afraid of the mold, but definitely you want to dry the kite as soon as possible in the following days. I recommend drying it where there is not much wind and if possible in an open air space in the shadow. Never use a brush for cleaning sand of the canopy, it will definitely damage it. Always make sure to dry your kite properly first, then just shake the sand away of the kite. How to handle a kite without a bar, you can see in my previous episode about how to be an assistant kiter. 
So whenever your kite is inflated and you want to move it from a place to another, always carry it in smile position. Being lazy and just dragging your kite on the beach is definitely damaging. I do not recommend to leave your kites for too long in the car, especially in warm weather conditions, as the pipes connecting the struts with the leading edge could melt, stick to the kite canopy and break. Also, on all the generation of kites, the valves can unglue easily. Please, if you have more tips, share them with us down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next episode.